Network from American University. This is NSLC Nightly News with Hartley Wise and Meg Graff. Hi, I'm Meg Graff. And I'm Hartley Wise. You're watching NSLC Nightly News. For our first story, we go to National Public Radio, home to prominent programs such as Morning Edition, All Things Considered, and Marketplace. NPR is also home to some of the world's best in the field of communications. We go to two of our reporters at NPR's headquarters here in D.C. to learn more. I am here at the location of the National Public Radio where one of our interviewers are inside interviewing one of the employees here about the role that he plays in journalism. Let's go to Connor to find out the details. I was lucky enough to sit down with Stephen Thompson, a founder and host of Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast, to talk about his experiences in the field of journalism and his role at NPR. Um, I always say my job splits about evenly among three things, uh, writing, editing, and talking. I, I definitely attached to the idea of being a journalist at a very, very early age, and then, um, and then stuck with it. After working at The Onion, where he founded the satirical newspaper's AV Club, he joined NPR in 2007. I mean, I enjoy every facet of the job, and I enjoy it. Uh, I honestly can say I enjoy everybody I work with, which is a huge privilege, having worked at a number of different places. Thompson created Pop Culture Happy Hour with his self-proclaimed best friend Linda Holmes. He is also a founder of the music series Tiny Desk Concert, which has featured Hozier, Adele, T-Pain, and many others. We then asked Thompson what advice he has for aspiring journalists. My advice for young journalists is sort of my advice for, for all people. <laughs> um, which is like you can never have enough friends, uh, you can never be nice to enough people, you can never do enough favors, um, you can never engage enough in the world. I don't know where I would be without the the, the friendships that I've that I've nurtured in, in, in this business and and that's going to be there for me uh, that's going to be there for me whatever I do in my life. Thank you Connor it's great to know that journalism still plays such an important role in our world today. Back to you in the studio. Thank you Madison and Connor for giving us exclusive access to a man with a fascinating story, a great sense of humor, and powerful advice for journalists of the future. NSLC Nightly News isn't the only group of journalists on campus. News to Share is an up-and-coming news network and operates right here at American University. Katie Bonche has the story. News to Share is an up-and-coming news network founded by AU students Trey Yingst and Ford Fisher. News to Share prides itself on being on the ground floor of news and getting the real story. Trey Yinks gives us some insight on this exciting network. People don't really care about the news, so we wanted to figure out some way to make people care about the news more. Um, and for us, that was News to Share. Um, I think it's a, a new style of news. Um, it's a type of news that people aren't used to. Uh, the, so the news is not always something that is exciting um, to look at or, or fun or enjoyable to look at, but it's important. Um, so for me, memorable doesn't always have to be the most fun story that I covered, but it's uh, the one that had the largest impact on me. And I think that uh, covering the, the war in Gaza was just um, a whole different level of, of journalism for me because it just got to the, the raw human emotion of people who were living in a, in a conflict zone and couldn't get out. Um, so as bombs were dropping, I was able to take my U.S. passport and leave uh, and go home. But the people that I was interviewing were already home. News to Share has covered stories ranging from the Ferguson case to the Baltimore riots to the war in Gaza. The network continues to gain followers through social media and by reaching out to other AU students. Since its founding in 2013, News to Share has become a daily news source with reporters stationed all over the world in places such as Sub-Saharan Africa and Ukraine. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Katie. Another interesting aspect of News to Share is citizen submission. Anyone can submit a story and receive full credit. If you want to submit a story, go to this website. American University campus has created various programs which seek to ensure the safety of their students and staff. Let's go to the main quad to learn more about these programs. Hi, I'm Hannah Sprinkle and I'm here on American University campus. Today we're going to be interviewing students and faculty to see if they know what these blue boxes are and how safe they feel on campus. The blue light phones can be seen all around campus. If a student feels threatened in any way, they can push the button located on the box, which immediately contacts the dispatch center and sends out an officer. Okay, so do you know what this blue box behind us is? Um, I'm pretty sure it's one of those emergency buttons. I don't know, for safety, right? 
emergency. It is uh, some type of emergency box is what it looks like to me. Okay, and during your time here on campus, how safe have you felt? Well, as you can hear right there, is uh, the sirens are going off, so I feel very secure here. I think the police, are, uh, the campus police are uh, very professional. I'm uh, pretty safe. I've been here for like four days, and I've seen like so many security vans, like police officers all around, so like I don't feel unsafe at all. We're standing in front of the campus public safety building. Today, many people knew how to use the blue boxes, while many people didn't. But overall, the students and faculty on AU clearly felt very safe. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Hannah. Knowing just how accessible these emergency blue light phones are should help us all feel safer. We've had some wonderful stories so far, but it's time for us to take a break. Please stay tuned for more of your favorite news programming at NSLC Nightly News. It's really, really good. It tastes, I don't know, fresher than what you usually get. Where's it from? I decided to splurge on the good stuff this week, so I went to the DAV. Well, I'm glad you did. This is great. Thanks for being such a thoughtful roommate. Glad you like it. So, you won't mind if my little brother comes for a visit? As long as you keep buying me good coffee like this, you can stay as long as you want him to. Thanks, Rumi. You're the best. As long as I keep getting this coffee, I am the best. I was looking for Sarah, but I can tell she was here. Yeah, about 15 minutes ago. Though it seems like she never left. Hey guys, I hear you were looking for me. I was going to try to track you down by your smell. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ha, you're just jealous because I smell so good. Seriously? Sam, no kidding. That's a bit too much. But the commercial said it would help give me that just shower freshness all day long. Only if you shower what it. She's trying to say it's, it's a bit overpowering. Maybe you should try this. Fan unscented. You'll all be glad you did. Welcome back to NSLC Nightly News. Incredible new technology is created every day. As time goes on, things that were once a fantasy become available to everyone. Let's go to Stephen McLeod for a glimpse into the future. Printers. The idea immediately brings up the thought of a machine spitting out papers. But in modern times, we have new printers. Rather than spewing out papers of the days of old, 3D printers create anything from new phone cases to prosthetic limbs. American University recently purchased such a printer in order to enhance the student experience. We had a chance to sit down with an expert on the matter to learn more about this amazing technology. Sure, my name is Joey Fons. I'm the technology, coordinator, uh, technology services coordinator at the AU Library. And we are bringing the printer and showcasing it for the White House's initiative, the National Week of Making. 3D printing is the process of making three-dimensional solid objects from a digital file. It all starts by creating a virtual design in a 3D modeling program or by copying an existing object with a 3D scanner. Or that students have different learning styles. Not everybody is a visual learner, not everybody is an audio learner. Um, some people learn by hands-on tactile feeling and if you can print something that can be demonstrative to people. So, you know, it's a model that they can hold and it can literally let them grasp whatever concept they're trying to, to learn. That could be really, really beneficial to people. We asked a student what they would use a 3D printer for. I feel like if I were to use a 3D printer, I would maybe use it to print like a phone case or something of that sort, just anything fun like that. As you can see, it's clear that this amazing technology can be used in a whole multitude of ways, from helping people in about a million ways to just making us laugh a little bit. This is Stephen McLeod from the American University Library. Back to you guys at the studio. Thank you, Stephen, for that intriguing report. I wonder if they can make a 3D copy of me. America is known for opportunity. Students all over the world come here for further education and to create relationship with others. Reporter Imani Thaniel will now take us into the world of the international students at American University and NSLC. The students of NSLC come from far and wide. They range from Turkey to Canada. 
As we look closer at the participants of the NSLC program, we find that many of them later applied to American University. AU is home to precisely 1,300 international undergraduate students. We're looking at students we're looking at students from over 150 different countries around the world who speak a variety of languages, who come from very, very different educational systems. So planning ahead is an important part of the process. DWC is a great program. We promote that program outside the United States when we visit different schools and speak with students who are maybe um, at that time 10th graders or 11th graders and tell them, hey, if you want to have a great two or four, year exper uh, four week experience at AU, here's an opportunity. Well, I came because I've always wanted to be a journalist and so I decided to come because of the wonderful opportunities here for the profession that I want to be in, especially broadcast journalism. So I want to see if broadcast journalism really is for me and so far I'm loving it. Hello, who hand it? My name is Megan. Hola, bienvenidos a American University. As you can see, the international student population is growing, and AU has embraced them with open arms. So from the people of AU, gracias, merci, gracias, salamat. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Imani, for such a great encounter with the international students of American University and NSLC. AU is known for inviting people of all cultures by looking deep into the students' progress and talents instead of standardized test scores. I'm Meg Graff. And I'm Hartley Wise. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching NSLC, NSLC Nightly, Nightly News. News.